TikTok, 36 hours and counting until the next bomb goes off. Let's talk about it now. You're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz <laughs> We are back! Hello, marshmallows, and welcome to the show. I'm your host, Kelsey Hightower, with me is the original marshmallow, Shay Jones. Hi, guys. I am so excited. We're talking gods of war like Aries. You know? Yes. Hello. It's very, I don't know, I don't Mythological. know the right, yes, and just strong and supernatural and all of these wonderful things. Um, we are excited to jump into this very dramatic episode. We are getting so close to the finale, it's not even funny. But before we get started, do we have any overall thoughts on this episode? She said yes. Ah! <laughs> oh my god! Overall thought that I was just so happy for it. Because I've been waiting for this moment for over 15, like 15 years, basically, for it to happen. So this is like my very like fangirl moment of just being happy. Yes. Let's soak in that happiness um, because it was a world of trouble getting there. And uh, we had, you know, lives ruined, spanning continents, bloodshed. All of it. But you know what? It was worth it. Because in the end, she said yes. yes. So we're excited about that. Um, okay, tonight on the show, we are going to be talking about sweet, sweet, sexy dreams and <laughs> Logan being back. Plus, we have the Weevil and Clyde business connection. And of course, Pin and Carol have cabin fever. And finally, mini Veronica and that convertible um, are up to some mischief. Plus, we have our special segments, Breaking the Glass Ceiling and News and Predictions at the very end of this episode. So be sure to stick around till then. Um, and let's go ahead and jump right in to it with those sweet, sweet, sexy dreams. Let's talk about relationships since oh. that was our overall thought must in the we? beginning. We must. <laughs> Before we get into Logan, let's go ahead and talk about Leo. And Leo was on Veronica's mind for a while, I should say, if she's having dreams about that. Um, yes, Leo from the FBI. Um, let's talk about how Max we felt about... Greenfield has... Like, seriously, another person who's aged very well. Yes, Max Greenfield. He's he's great as an actor, for sure. Yes, he's been, he's been in it for a long time. And there's a, something about a guy that ages well where you're just like, damn. And we saw in the last episode that their relationship together, uh, Veronica and Leo, was really steaming up. And I think that because... Oh, there's an old oh, picture. Oh, we have a picture of them. From the OG season one, I'm going to... Season one, I'm definitely going to predict that was season one picture right now because of her. Before he was hot and sexy in the FBI. He was a sheriff's deputy at the Neptune police station. I, and he was cute and awkward and dorky. <laughs> The long, like the long hair that kind of curled back. Oh my gosh. Yes. And he, I know he, uh, during that season, um, he was just such a little baby, a little nugget. And I remember like all of his lines, he just kind of is, has that little twinkle in his eye. And he's like, hello, I'm, I'm so happy that you brought pizza. And then now he's like, you know, very confident and sure of himself as an actor. He's been in many things. He's has his own. He's been in lots of sitcoms. You know, yeah. New Girl. He's got a CBS show. Oh, the neighborhood. Um, the neighborhood. With Cedric the Entertainer in their filming season two starting Tuesday. So if you guys live in LA and you want to check him out. Tuesdays at table at CBS Raffer. You can get your tickets on on camera audiences. That would be so fun. Not what a fun an adventure. Ad. <laughs> this is not an ad, but something we like to do, and we're just big fans. So there you go. Um, as far as on the show together, um, I was so relieved that Veronica and Leo did not hook up. I completely agree. I, I'm watching the episode, and in my, I actually said out loud, this better be a dream. This better not have been, because as much as I want it, you're still with Logan, and don't do that to my man. That is so true. And I'm glad your head was there, because when it was happening, I think I was shouting, what are you doing? No, don't do it. I was so, I was in it. I believed that it was real. And I was just like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It's like, I want it to happen. But then when it does happen, it's like, no, I didn't want it. I'm just kidding. And I love that it was written so well to kind of, I mean, it tricked me. So I'm glad that, you know, 
woke up to that. Also, it was so weird that, I mean, it was a Wallace, dream that yeah. Wallace was in the corner. I was like, there's Wallace. So then I was like, oh. That's and how then, you know it was a dream. I know. <laughs> and honestly, that's like dreams, you know? You just have different people popping in and going out, and dreams are the craziest and most fascinating things. Percy has aged, like, he, like everybody, seriously, we keep saying everybody on the show has aged very well, and we can appreciate the fineness that they, they've prone with age with. Yes. Because they're just all attractive people. This is a very attractive cast. I mean, what kind of water are they drinking? I want to drink some of that. Share it. Share, share it. the wealth. Share the youth. Yes, yeah, share there the you youth. Go. I actually like that a lot better. <laughs> share the youth. However, I was really happy it was a dream. It wasn't in real life. And then, they're, you know, they still have that whole... Big Lebowski conversation that kind of got awkward, which is, I think, the first time their relationship ever has gotten awkward because obviously she just had the dream and now, no, we can't do whatever this is because I am committed to somebody no matter how frustrated I get when he leaves Mm -hmm. from periods of time that he can't tell me about. That would be extremely hard. I can't even imagine that type of lifestyle. But we do see in the end, we are already so giddy about this, but (laughs) Logan comes home and what a sweet tender moment that she has with Logan where, I mean, she's been through the whole episode and we'll jump into that in a moment, but she has been through so much in this episode and she was like, do you still have this ring? I'm getting the goosebumps. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm dorking out right now, but I have the goosebumps just talking about it. She was like, do you have the ring? And he was like, I do. And she was like, great, you already know your line. And I was stop it you're killing me right now this is so sweet and so yeah they're gonna they're gonna be official it's official happening. official because she almost died and i think when, when it was happening when we get into that part of the episode that does make you really look at your life and i think not like saying no to logan and if you had died today that would have been something you would regret it Granted, you're dead, so you still you can't regret. But you I get you would have regretted saying. in your death, and it goes to real. So you could be that something could haunt you, and you could haunt Logan because you feel guilty and yeah. you regret about it. I'm I just wanted to say I'm sorry. Ah, oh, go away. You're a ghost. You, know? you can't hear know. me. You can't see me. <laughs> but and it, like the fact that she, you know, I love her voiceovers. It, it's just everything. But she said, when I woke up, I felt relief, relief that I didn't hurt Logan. And at the end of the day, neither one wants that. And she, I think at that moment, just realized, you're the man I love. No matter how I feel about your therapy, no matter how my fear of marriage is, what we have is definitely bigger than my fears. And I need I need to come overcome that. I needed to make the conscious decision not to let my fear stop me from just loving you and marrying you because I don't think a ring is going to stop that from happening. I say this a lot that I like the writing on this show, but that was so well written as far as it's just honest dialogue because she says what we are thinking. She said that she was relieved that that was a dream. And to be like honest about that on a TV show and having that inner monologue being spoken out loud um, is so... It brings a deeper connection, I feel like, as a fan and as a viewer. And then secondly, when she says, um, you know, he asked why now, she says, you know, I've had a lot of clarity. And so she was able to say, like, what has changed? And I think that that dialogue was so important. And that was one of the key dialogues, I felt like, in this whole episode as far as their relationship goes and she'll be like baby i'll tell you later about me getting shot at but right now i just really want you okay and that's such a veronica thing to say i mean that's like <laughs> well, she, when she well, got she, well, she didn't say it but she like if that, i think if that when she got home she's like i'm more happy that you're here than to tell you about my day because then i have to talk about it and i really just want to have sex with you and, and she, get that's your all ring. she says i know she's like just give me the ring let's, yeah let's get down to business yeah, yeah, i've been having some sweet sweet dreams let's make this real all that stuff all right we're getting a little hot and heavy over here <laughs> Let's go ahead and jump into um, our crimes. Uh, Let's jump into the bombing and all that stuff. But before we get too far into that, um, I want to talk about Weevil and Clyde's business relationship. So there was a connection. It's like the show, up until now, we've seen all of the individual groups, and now we're starting to see 
how everybody connects into this nice little spider web. Um, so Weevil and Clyde are business partners, and we knew that from the robberies. But again, this is one of those moments when we see Clyde and Weevil in the same car together, you know, passing money over to one another and talking about this is the last transaction. There isn't going to be any more work after this. That puts Weevil in a really tight spot because Claudia just lost her job. People are losing their jobs because of the bombings. Um, and he does take care of the entire group as a leader. That's what he does. But it's also like he said, I'm going to hate when I have to tell Veronica, get that I told you so from her. Because it's she so she just ends up being right. It sucks, but she is right. That's true. And Claudia, when he says that to Claudia, she, um, yeah, she just, we talked about this last episode, and we just don't have feelings about Claudia. I'll tell you that. Um, she is dating the guy from the Mexican cartel, yes. Alonzo, and something bad is going to happen with that we see in this episode. Um, but and Claudia yeah. knows, which is also one of my things. Okay, so Alonzo told you that, like, that was where I was halfway confused. How do you know the plan right now? Did Alonzo tell you? I'm, I really am now interested in how she got that information. That's true. But a really cool thing that happens between Weevil and Clyde is that um, Weevil tells Clyde about Alonzo yes. and that he is part of the Mexican cartel and that came up to find who killed Despiadados I legit probably messed it up uh, the, the cartel, Mexican cartel boss's nephew exactly so Clyde is now aware where he didn't know that information before and so that is going to I think help Clyde make further decisions maybe between him and Dick or We'll see about that. But as far as that goes, I really like that relationship that Clyde and Weevil seem to be on the same page together and sharing information. It's like, I'll scratch your back, you scratch my back. Like, you've helped me with this business, with the bombings. Just so like, here's. I can, I can still be more useful. Exactly. Because I need to keep the money coming in. I mean, Weevil is resourceful when he needs to be. He understands that if this money goes out, a lot of PCHers are probably going to go hungry. And as my job of the leader, I have to figure out a way to keep funds coming so that, especially because now Juan Diego is off to parts unknown. His mom, unfortunately, somehow won't get a job. I know. That's so, the thing is now that they're adults, this isn't the PCHers club anymore. You yeah. know, like you're not in high school. Um, we're not even in college. We're grown adults and we have families. And yes. there's, you know, you're married, you have kids, you know, lots of people in the group like are have their own families to ta to attend to, not just like your mom and dad, um, but it's just a lot more responsibility. It's called being an adult. So adulting, adulting, sucks. especially when you're running the PCHers and you gotta rob people to get money. I don't know. So that it's just more on the line, is what I'm saying. So. There you go. Um, I like that Clyde and Weevil are working together, and I hope that we'll see them being more together than tearing each other apart or using each other, I think, in the next episode in the finale. I hope we don't see any more. Oh. Oh, and because of what happens, like Weevil stops it. So now that you know he stopped what happened at the end, and even though he did introduce Clyde to... Um, the Mexican cartel, Dodi and Alonzo, there are a lot of just questions and repercussions. Well, I don't want Weevil happened. with the cartel. Like, I don't want no, him no, to like, be any part. I, don't, I mean, not to be in the cartel. I mean, just from him introducing Clyde to basically, quote unquote, assassins to now murder Big Dick. And I mean, granted, we've only set it up, but I don't think that means money's going to come his way from doing that. True. He needs to, I mean, he does need to get out, but he keeps trying to get out in the past seasons, and... He did it for five years before Celeste Kane messed everything up. That's true. Um, do you think that's going to be good that uh, Clyde is going to kill off uh, Dodie and Alonzo? You mean he's going to kill Big Dick? Or he's attempting to get Big Dick killed? Oh yes, 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 yes. That he's telling, but he's having a meeting with the Me Mexican cartel and having telling yes. them about it well, to get he Big was, he Dick still, killed. He kept recording. Yeah, I knew. We talked about this in the last 
in the last episode that I think that their relationship, Clyde and Big Dick, um, you know, was on rocky terms. And so I, yeah, this well, like, is really rocky, I would say. Well, yeah, when you reneged on a deal with the former bank robber who's smarter than you, did you really think you were going to come out unscathed from this? This is what happens. You get on your high horse and you forget about reality and you forget who you're working with. And, your and reality, what they're capable of. And your reality is that you don't run anything. You, it looks like you run everything, and that's the that's the point. You look like you run everything. Well, I do all the work and all the hard work at that. Granted, it's unscrupulous, but still. And then I really enjoyed the fact that even though Claudia, like, we all got super serious. Like, if you don't tell me exactly what's happening right now, don't lie to me. And, you know, she tells him, and he comes in and saves Veronica and Keith. And they just look at each other. It's like just a moment of, I got you. No matter what happened between us, I never wanted you to die. I, I, you're like you're like they have very important parts in each other's lives, and they've had it since they were in high school. No matter what goes down, no matter what friction, anger on either side of the conversation is, Weevil always shows up for Veronica, every single time. That's true, and that doesn't matter if they're in a rough patch and they don't like each other and they've yelled at each other and they don't agree with their lifestyles they still have this unspoken i have your back no matter what and that's like it's like a brother sister relationship like yeah. a true brother sister yeah, relationship one, but. yeah for sure but i i love it it's very endearing and yeah it, they've saved each other so many times they'll always be there yeah. for each other and as much as she called him a low level hood the thing is mm-hmm. so interesting though veronica knows th- that the what's been happening she knows that the pchers were taking money from clyde or big dick to bring down the property value or so that people could sell the boardwalk properties but somehow she still didn't bring up weevil's name to marsha langdon whatsoever his name has never come up she only has said something to cliff obviously because but that's a whole client confidentiality thing so that actually even though she's mad at him and she can't hold a grudge to the day is long she still somehow unspokenly has his back. Right. And like you said, we saw that at the cabin. So um, they he saved her at the cabin. And there was a there was a whole... That was what this episode was primarily about, is this finding Pin. Finding Pin. So Pin and Carol got some cabin fever. Um, wow, wow, wow. Yes. But that was because they were running from the law. No, they didn't even know. They just decided to, to take, run up there. To, uh, to, to like every, have sexy time. Everybody was looking looking for them and uh, 250,000 dollars worth of looking for you exactly and so they didn't have much sexy time in that cabin because they were quickly found by veronica and keith um up at the cabin um and so that leads us to the mexican cartel was following um keith and veronica Keith and Veronica found Pin, um, and it's just all of this colliding into this one scene. And we also saw, which was very sad, we can get into this too, Keith's health. So this is the worst that it's been. I knew at the very beginning of this season that his health was going to get in the way of something, of like a mission or just something bad was going to happen because he kept having memory loss well this was the something bad happening and he forgot how he forgot to load his gun and you're in a shootout and you don't have any bullets and that was just the most intense scene because you're getting shot at and And there's only nine bullets and you're counting them down so there you go he had to sneak in the back and thankfully weevil was there to save his life and veronica's life as well but that could have been really bad and he could have died really quickly if weevil hadn't have been there um so we saw that but let's jump into pin played by Patton oswald as we know um he is on the hot seat this episode because there's a new theory that there were two bombers and the first bomber was for the beach bombing the horse ring and the sea sprite and then um the sea sprite Sprite. was his own and then everything else after well we thought that the comrade quacks the beach that's what i'm saying is the after the sea sprite that was 
before and then after the Sea Sprite was a different bomber, which they are thinking is Pin, um, the pizza guy. And that is because they all had the same nail. And this nail was seen in the wall art, which was at Maddie's hotel. Um, well, not her. Well, it is her hotel now, actually. She is now the She's owner. now the owner. Um, so we, I just cannot get behind, I want to ask your thoughts, but I cannot get behind the pizza guy actually bombing it, um, being in charge. I think that he might have something to do with it as far as the murder heads go, but I don't think that he's the guy that actually did the bombings. What do you think? If somehow Penn isn't the bomber, then it might be a murder hit. That's where I'm leaning. Honestly, I'm leaning towards Don. Oh, I totally agree with that. Actually. Really? Really? Okay. Because even though Spill. he even though he video chats, we don't know where he lives at all. So while it may look like he could be in Washington meeting with this senator and that senator, that doesn't mean he somehow couldn't have come to Neptune in in the times, even the past times. I mean, though we we get we got some disturbing news on Penn's background, the fact that he took the assassin assassin game a little too uh, to reality versus where it should stay, um, and he knocked a guy's eye socket out while he was taking an exam in Hearst. Right, and then he didn't have any remorse for that. He said, you know, I won, so that's fine, you know. And so there was no remorse over, you know, taking an eye out. But, and yes, that is super disturbing. And I honestly can see that being his character, though. Like, that is who he is as the pizza guy. He's too surface I don't want to say surface level but he puts all his cards out on the table I feel like I don't think that there's much that he knows how to hide if you know what I'm saying so I he could this could I mean this is only what I think so this could be totally wrong but (laughs) from where my brain's at now I just don't feel like it's him as far as Don goes with the murder heads I think that he could have something to do with it. He might not be the bomber, but he could set it up, kind of like Big Dick did with Perry Walsh. But then we, we were asking ourselves, what would he have to gain? Because obviously the bombings are a lot more personal, so the motives to trying to kill Spring Break and Neptune is a very, very personal thing. For Dick, it's about money, and it's not the same thing. I Money think- and personal... Sometimes can't go hand in hand, but when it comes to the beach or Comrade Quacks, I don't feel like they those two things mesh. That's true. But he does work in the Senate. He does work in government. And we do have this whole storyline with Congressman Daniel. So I wonder if it has something to do with him. Because we do see him in this episode at the hospital. And um, we see that Amelia is talking for Daniel, saying, yes, he does want to get involved. Like, yes, he does want to move to the Senate. So I almost think that Dom could be behind the puppet strings as far as that family. But maybe I'll just bring that up more in my predictions. How about that? Okay, I'm totally down for that. Okay, that sounds good. Now Keith has decided that he's done. Oh, my gosh, breaks my heart. He's quitting the private eye game. He even came clean to Clyde and told Clyde that, you know, let's stop playing the game that we've been playing. We know we're playing a game. Both of us are we're very smart men. We understand the game that we're playing right now. But put your cards on the table because at the end of the day, this is my last case and I will solve this with my daughter. And whether you're involved or not, I will break you down. Yeah, that's so true. And, oh, Keith, I am very nervous about the finale episode with him because his health just went on the decline and hopefully we see some results from we haven't seen any medical results from two or three episodes ago whenever he went to see the fancy doctor that big dicks and clyde set him up with so i think that it's gonna also be to come um before we get on to our last topic mini veronica do you want to do a shout out okay guys so I just want to shout you guys out. You guys have been tuning in with us for the last two weeks, and we so appreciate it. We love being the ESPN of TV talk. 
But to continue to do what we do here, we need your help. So if you're listening to us right now on iTunes, give us that five star rating. The one through four were blown up by Big Dick. Yeah. I'm so yeah, sorry. They, were. they they just don't work, but the five continues to work. But if you're watching us right now on YouTube, give us that thumbs up button, comment, tell us your theories. If you've watched the show before we have, tell us, you know, your thoughts on it. We just want to hear from you. We so appreciate being to do what we do here and love talking about our shows, movies, and the stars, and these characters that have been so much to us over the years. So we thank you for letting us do that. And Kelsey, back to you. Well, thank you so much, Shay. Thank you guys for watching. We do pr- uh, appreciate. I sound like an announcer. And Kelsey, back to you. I love that. And back to me. And then back to you. No, I'm just kidding. We won't do that. <laughs> but seriously, thank you, fellow marshmallows, for being out there and watching. We love you guys. Um, let's jump into our very last topic is how we ended the episode for episode seven, which is seeing mini Veronica, Maddie. Yeah. As we'll call her, Maddie Ross, um, jumping out of the convertible. Well, she didn't. We didn't see. We saw her jump out. Big Dick did not see her jump out. <laughs> but she is so sneaky in this episode. She does such a good job of following in Veronica's footsteps, doing the things that Veronica would do. She returned the convertible back to Big Dick, and he drove it right up into his house, into the garage, where she proceeded to jump out of the car and do a little detective work herself, not knowing that Big Dick has his own in-home video cameras he does which is you know not surprising but he did not get very far i don't think down the road before that alarm motion sensor went off yes so that's where they left us and i'm very nervous that maddie is going to get caught she has been riding on the brink of danger this whole season she has she she has like we keep saying she has veronica's feistiness but ha- not half of the street smart exactly that veronica has and even when veronica gave her the taser and you know she came to the door with the taser she's like oh she's learning it's a you know it's a process because you know you just lost her dad and you've probably always been this little sneaky or feisty person but now there's also anger tapped onto that and now you really don't know how to direct that anger to the proper person it needs to be directed at because Especially when something that tra- ha- tragic happens, you need someone to blame for it. There has to be. She is riding on emotion. That is yeah. exactly how she is trying to solve the case. Just like, which is contrasting to Veronica, whereas she uses her street smarts and she has a good head on her shoulder so she can use common sense and take her she does a really good job let's be honest of taking those emotions out of the picture which aren't so good in her it's yeah it's not so good in her personal life but very good in her professional life and maddie doesn't have that skill um i'm curious hope the only thing that she could really do to defend herself against Big Dick is to use that taser. I don't know that she... she I don't know what else she could do. If she does, that would be the happiest moment of my life. It's going to be a throwback for the ages. And I... I, Something about that taser just makes me giddy. It makes me happy. Because we've seen it over three seasons most of the time of her using it on people. Mostly people who deserve it, obviously. But somebody needs to take big dick down and if it's gonna be a little 16 year old girl i'm down me too i'm down for that as well and it would be a really good ending i think to in the finale because veronica has given her the taser and she hasn't been able to use it yet but i think it means so much that she has passed the torch passed the taser on to maddie and i really think she needs to do something big with the taser just to kind of show that she has accepted it and she is holding the torch now. So that's kind of where my head's at with Maddie and the taser. Maddie and the taser, spinoff series. One thing that did make me a little upset, though, was the friendship broken between Nicole and Veronica. That was very hard to watch. That was very hard to watch. It was a little sad because I think Veronica finally found another female that she could be really good friends with, but because of the suspiciousness of her and her experience, I think the only person she hasn't actually ever bugged was Wallace. Yeah. Wallace is... She's bugged his mom. I did think about that for a moment. She bugged Clarence Weedman. She's bugged the guidance counselor office. She's bugged everybody, I think, except for Wallace. This is true. And 
it was an honest moment between Veronica and Nicole. I think Veronica was trying to come clean about it and be truthful to Nicole. Yes. But in doing that, it ruined the friendship. And I think that Veronica wouldn't have been able to live with herself if she just lied about it. Yes. So I think she had to tell her what happened, and that's where we were left. I think that actually just also shows Veronica's growth. I mean, we've been, I've been kind of waiting on it, but for me, that was her growth in that moment of just coming clean because she actually likes you. That's true. And But Nicole said, from what you know about me, do you think I believe in second chances? Because her and Veronica are similar in a lot of ways. Second chances checking second chances are very hard for them to come by to give to others. That's true. I mean, granted, she gave Logan four, but still. That's the only one. Um, That's because she probably likes yes. sleeping with them, too. No. Logan I, I, oh, Logan really is the only person she has ever given more than a second chance to. But it's actually, Duncan. Duncan, but Duncan only got two. Logan has four now. If we're if we're gonna tell, if we're it. keeping count, yes. Um, so oh, and Weevil, Weevil wins as second one second. But as chance far as come. females go, I females, don't think I don't this think... is comparable. She doesn't do that. No, like she's tried to give other people a chance, but when she knows she's right about them and it actually ends up being true, she just washes her hands of it, and now it's being done to her. Right. Well, this was a very exciting episode and this is going to lead us up into the finale we have a lot to talk about as far as predictions go what we're going to predict for the finale but before we get into our predictions let's go ahead and jump into our special segment which is breaking the glass ceiling shay (laughs) what powerful woman do you have for us today I like that second one. Hey, guys, so we're going to talk about Mika Hollander. As we did have a very, very sexy, sexy dream, she is the perfect person to highlight as she has created a a vegan condom product. Not just condoms as well. She's done tampons and pads uh, in vegan organic content. And she started this company with her dad, which for a lot of us, I don't think this is the kind of thing we could do with our parents. She's a much more, you know, go-getter than I will be in that aspect. But her parents also own 7th Generation. And she's been growing up 7th Generation for the last... The parents have had the company for 20 years, and so she been, she's been with them for that long and just seeing and working for the company and knowing that she wanted to do something, but she also wanted it to be something unique that she can make her own stamp on. So she decided that Everybody talks about condoms, and condoms are very vital in relationships when you're having sex with somebody. But a lot of, most condoms are used with things that most likely aren't good for our bodies as women, especially. So she created this company to create sustainable, natural, vegan, organic condoms and tampons and pads for women who, you know, worry about that type of thing. And I think that's amazing. To create her own company within her parents' company. I think it's amazing, too, that she did this with her dad. That sounds like such an awkward, (laughs) awkward business to get into with a parent, and especially your dad. So I think that just sets the limit. Uh, There is no limit to be set, is what I'm trying to say, for women um, and what you can do and who you can do it with, you know? Anybody. Do it with, yes. Yes. Ah, (laughs) that is a pun. Yes. (laughs) And you get it. Um, Thank you for sharing that about her. And I like that she is thinking um, not only about our bodies but about the environment and she's doing something good and she's doing something that I don't know who normally is thinking about condoms and making condoms what whose business is in charge of that but it's cool to see a woman excelling in that department and they're made from natural latex so all right well thanks Shay um that brings us to our very next segment which is we have a little bit of news to share with you just some quick news. So if you were wondering who is the one take king or queen on Veronica Mars, well, BuzzFeed has got you covered. So they sat down with the cast and played the who's who game. And when now who, when they were asked who, that's a lot of who's in that, <laughs> who, you know, is the best at the like, first just one take scene, everybody says Kristen Ryan Hansen says Kristen dot 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 asshole and Jason is just very fond of his 
counterpart, I will say, and just says that she would even come in and say, I have not read this and just kill it. Though Enrique, who plays her dad, says that everything a little bit has changed, obviously, from the first three seasons of Veronica Mars because, you know, her life has changed. She's grown. She has kids. So sometimes she does mess up. However, he likes to say that even the one in season one through three were perfect. Oh, that's really cool to hear. Yeah, because um, when you're on set, you are normally doing different camera angles. You do the wide shot, just kind of like we do today. We do the wide shot. We do um, a close-up on you, your conversation. Then you turn around and do a close-up on me to get my conversation. And that can take many takes. You can do that, you know, two, three, and then you get a safety. So for Kristen Bell to be doing it one time, that must make production fly. And I'm sure <laughs> the producers are super happy with her being able to get through those quickly and just to know know her lines even if she hasn't seen them. How who can do that? That just shows how talented she is. That is very true and that's why we love her. We love her. We love watching her. Um whether she practices a million times or does it one time, she is awesome. Um so that leaves us um with our very last thing and that is some quick predictions. <laughs> la la la. And now your after buzz <laughs> TV predictions. <laughs> So I'm going to go really quickly. Okay, what's your one prediction for the finale? They're going to get married. Oh, I love that. Okay, that's a great prediction. I predict that Clyde will do something to get Big Dick killed, and he will take over the company, and Clyde will be in charge and have all the power. That's my prediction for the finale. Um, speaking of the finale, thank you guys for watching our fellow marshmallows. We will be talking about the finale tonight at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So, guys, be sure to join us right back here tonight. But until then, Shay, where can everybody find you? You guys can find me at Real Shay Jones on Twitter and Instagram, Grand Hotel Mondays at 8 p.m. And I'm Kelsey Hightower, and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at, at Kels Hightower. And we will see you guys tonight at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Bye! Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.